Hello everybody, welcome to my walkthrough of Bloodborne. In today's episode, episode number 12, we're going to be covering the lecture building uh, and pretty much not really anything else. Um, really the lecture building only acts as like a middle ground to get to two new areas uh, to get to each respective nightmare realm. There's the nightmare frontier, which is a side area or a optional area, um, which is probably what we're going to do in the next episode. Um, and then there's also the uh, Nightmare of Mensis, uh, which is a kind of a story area. You need to clear the Nightmare of Mensis if you actually want to progress the game. Um, before we do anything else, we're going to upgrade our weapon. We have enough materials to get it to up to level 9. And then with uh, also the Blood Gem that we picked up in the last episode from the Unseen Village. Um, we definitely want to equip this one. The level 5 Tempering Damp Blood Gem is going to increase our physical attack damage by a whopping 18%. Uh, so definitely the best gem that we have at this point. Um, so again, with our weapon now being at level 9 and with that gem, we are now doing uh, 338 damage per swing uh, with our weapon, which is very, very good. Um, and with the rest of it, I guess the rest of our echoes, we should probably level up. Um, again, pretty much hit my soft caps on all my stats, so I'll start dumping the rest into Blood Tinge. Just to make our left hand weapon that much stronger. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, one thing, I think because this episode is going to go a bit on the shorter side, um, I will show off something that I kind of forgot to show you guys um, really in my head and I think I really just wasn't thinking about it and I will explain why a little bit later um, but first like the first thing we're gonna do is go back to the Advent Plaza that is where we just fought the One Reborn um, so yeah after you kill the One Reborn um, if you don't want to go to the dream uh, if you don't want to you know use the lantern go back to the dream you're just gonna go up these stairs and uh, we're going to have to inspect a corpse, and then that's going to bring us to the lecture building, which again is the kind of, again, acts as a middle ground, um, a transitional area to get to the next two areas of the game. Um, so basically this area is split into two floors, and there's an entrance to a new area at the end of each floor. Um, so basically I think what I'm going to do is just clear the entire building. We're going to do the, you know, the floor that we're on now, and then move on to the bottom floor, and then just enter the Nightmare Frontier from down there. Once we get to the Nightmare Frontier, we're going to, um, pretty much exit out. We're going to Lantern back to the Dream, and then come back here, run by all the enemies on this floor, and then access the Nightmare of Mensis, uh, and then go back to the Dream. And then, uh, like I said, I should have enough time at the end of the episode to tackle one little side thing that I forgot to mention. Um, there are new enemies here. None of them are very intimidating or anything like that. They're not very, uh, again, not a very intimidating enemy. Um, so over here, just be careful. There is one on the top of the doorway here. I'm pretty sure it's just if you walk directly under him. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you have to interact with the item. I don't know. And then once we walk by him, there you go. I don't know what that was all about. Okay, um, you want to go through on this side. So we want to clear. Yeah, we want to clear these enemies first. Uh, just be careful. There's a few of them on this side that are going to start throwing water at you. I think it's water. Actually, no. It's probably like whatever slime is coming out of these guys. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what's in that slime, but. So yeah, just be careful. Just if you stay around these pillars, they shouldn't be able to uh, hit you with the, uh, the the water or the slime. So after killing those enemies, you just want to backtrack a little bit. There's going to be a door over here. Again, nothing too exciting in this area. Just a few. Actually, there is a kind of an important rune that we can pick up. Over here, yeah, I think there's a rune and a arcane item, if I'm not mistaken. That are really the uh, the more important things to pick up. Oh shit! Oh okay. Um, I don't think there's anything in here, but real quick, I will swing in. No, nothing in here. No items. All right, this here is basically just a church giant with uh, flames. Flames, uh, flames for hands. So I definitely like it when he breaks this stuff just to make the fighting area a little bit larger. 
try to bait an attack so you can at least clear some of this uh, shit out of the way. And then, yeah, you're basically just fighting a church giant, so just try to get behind them. And try to stay behind them as much as you possibly can. Again, not super foolproof. Holy shit. You tend to have uh, slower attacks, so kind of delay your dodges a little bit. Oof. No. I got greedy. Good golly. Tanky. Alright, just have a few guys that we want to clear over here. Actually, I don't think there's really much left to do. I don't even know what that item is. I think it's bloodstone chunks at the end of uh, the hallway over there. On the other side of this pillar, there's two of them. Oh, okay. And yeah, bloodstone chunk. Oh, I thought you were dead. Alright. Um, if you want, you can totally go through that door right now, but I just recommend clearing the whole building so that you can get to the, uh, the Nightmare Frontier first so you don't have to go all the way down a second time. I mean, either way, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, Patches over here, I don't think it matters what you respond here. He's gonna have you answer a question, and it doesn't really matter, I think, what you answer. Uh, either way... I believe after you talk to him, he's going to give you the anti-clockwise metamorphosis, which is, uh, again, one of my favorite runes. It's going to increase our max stamina by 15%, so if you stack the one that we have already equipped plus that one, you have uh, plus 25% stamina. Uh, we won't be stacking them, but uh, anyways, uh, after you talk to him and you get the rune out of him, you basically just want to kill him to get a Great One's Wisdom, which is uh, essentially Madman's Knowledge, but instead of getting just one insight, you get two. Um, okay. Once we open that door. Uh, in this door, there is no items, but there is another lantern. Which I guess is good. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Alright, so the first thing you want to go is there's going to be a door over here on the left. Go through this other door over here. There's going to be a key on this desk here that we need to pick up for... Uh, to get into another room that's on this floor. So yeah, there's a locked room. We need this key. Uh, a tire that you can probably just sell. Not very useful, uh, at least not gameplay-wise. Uh, over here. In this room, there's a uh, corpse, or sorry, an enemy hanging over these items. So just walk over them. Then you can pick them up afterwards. Um, don't go through this hazy door just yet. Oh, actually. I think there's an item in this one. I know one of the rooms has a chest with... Yeah, there you go. So over in this chest we have the Augur of Abritus. Oh no, sorry. This is the Red Jelly. Augur of Abritus is, I believe, in a room further. So Red Jelly is... Um, not really useful for us right now. Um, it's basically just useful for the Chalice Dungeons, if you want to mess around with that. Um, if you do mess around with the Chalice Dungeons, uh, the Red Jelly is actually a super important item. <laughs> it's a very rare uh, ritual material, basically. And with the key that we got from the other room, we enter the uh, Frame Drop room. Uh, there's basically a bunch of enemies here, and they're all going to start aggroing onto us, and our frames are probably going to drop quite significantly. Um, luckily these enemies die relatively quickly, so once you kill a few of them, you're, uh, the game should start performing back to uh, what it's supposed to. But yeah, as you can see, it's basically just a giant pile of them. Fucking Christ, <laughs> it's really annoying. Even just trying to get in there. Good golly. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I didn't realize. I think the slime, because it lingers, it does like almost like damage over time. If you stay in the cloud too long, you'll start taking like tick damage. I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize that. All right. So once that room is finally clear, you can get the hell out of there. 
And I believe, yeah, it's in this room over here. In this chest. Open up this chest, and then you get the Augur of Abridus. Um, that is, if you guys remember, um, basically in the last episode, or no, uh, before last episode in Bergenworth. Um, basically, we killed a hunter that was using this item, essentially. So there was like a tentacle that came out of her arm. Um, that's essentially that. So it takes 18 arcane to use, I think. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, all the way to the end of the hallway, you want to interact with this door. And like I said, the one at the bottom floor of the lecture building that we just cleared is going to bring you to the Nightmare Frontier, which is an optional area. Um, nothing super crazy going on here. There is a boss fight at the end, which I recommend you do. Anytime you get to uh, do a boss fight, it's always fun. Um, but also, but like I guess like there's definitely nothing for like trophies in this area. There's no weapons or hunter tools or anything like that. Um, basically, just some runes, some upgrade materials, and I think a few blood gems. That's about it. Um, so again, completely optional area. Um, so you don't need to do this area, but again, I recommend you do. Um, so once we get here, we want to lantern out back to the dream. Uh, probably going to level up because we have a good amount of uh, blood echoes. And uh, then we're going to go back to the lecture building just to unlock the Nightmare of Mensis. Very well. Let me... Okay, do this. We're actually missing just a small amount. Ooh, well. actually one thing I do want to do is uh, equip my new rune. So again, we already have the anti-clockwise that increases our stamina by 10%, so now I'm just going to go up to 15 uh, we're probably going to leave, yeah, leave the rest, and I forgot to, <laughs> uh, I was raving about how much I loved it, and I forgot to equip it, but basically my, uh, the hunter rune here is just going to increase my stamina recovery speed, which is, uh, really, really good. Um, so now, might as well use one of these, just so I can level up again. Again, I've been kind of stockpiling these, I haven't really been using them, but I definitely recommend that you use, um, these... Uh, cold bloods and stuff like that. It's just free blood echoes. So again, if you're, you know, I've been very conservative with them, but by all means, if you want to use them when you get them, you, you definitely can. I almost uh, definitely recommend it, actually. Should be able to uh, help you level a little bit more consistently throughout the, uh, throughout the areas. But yeah, so after that, you just want to go back to the uh, lecture building. I believe we want to go to, oh, sorry, I want to go here. And I believe the second floor is where we want to go, because I think that's on the top floor. So yeah, second floor. Um, and again, we're just going to, we've already cleared this whole area. We got all the items and killed all the enemies, did all the, everything we needed to do. So we can just walk by all of these enemies. Again, we just want to get to that doorway, that hazy kind of purpley doorway at the end of the hallway. That's all we want to get to. Let's skip this. Another guy on the left here. Just run by all that. Interact with this. Um, if you have any fire paper or molotovs, I definitely recommend having some sort of a fire. Um, the lantern is just a little bit further. Um, two reasons. There's going to be a scurrying beast who's going to have bloodstone chunks. Um, but also, there's going to be an enemy here, a new enemy that we haven't fought yet. And basically, if you kill that enemy um, normally, he's going to spawn two kind of worms that are going to come out of them. Um, but basically, if you kill this enemy with fire, so the last blow was done with either fire paper or a Molotov cocktail, the worms will not spawn out of them. So this enemy right here, again, if we were to kill this enemy without using fire, two worms would have kind of came out of his head and tried to kill us. So we're just trying to bypass that annoying stuff. And here's the scurrying beast I was talking about. There you go, some more bloodstone chunks. Now we can start upgrading our pistol and try to get that up to level 9. Free, blood echoes, and then the lantern is right up here. Do not progress through this area just yet. Very annoying area. <laughs> go back to the dream. Um, and again, we're pretty much done for this episode, so on the next episode we're going to do the Nightmare Frontier. For this episode, there is one thing that I forgot to kind of show you guys. Um, so here's the thing. There is an NPC, another one that you can bring to the chapel. Uh, his name is, well, I don't think we actually know his name, but it's the Suspicious Beggar. Um, he's found at uh, Forbidden Woods. So 
basically what's going to happen is if you bring that NPC to the chapel, as you progress through the game, he's going to kill off some of the NPCs that are in the church. So the reason why I didn't really want to show you guys that NPC um, originally is because he's not really tied to any trophies. Um, if you kill the suspicious beggar or you you know go through his quest line, eventually he's going to turn into a beast and you can kill him. Once you kill him, he gives you the beast rune. Essentially, that's all you get out of him is just a rune that, in my opinion, is quite niche and is only really effective if you're using a weapon like Beast Claws or something like that. Um, so I don't really... You know, I didn't think that was necessary to show you guys. And also, Ariana, um, after we defeat a certain boss later on in the game, she's actually going to drop us one of the four possible umbilical cord pieces. So again, that's why I want to show you guys Ariana's quest, because she's actually kind of tied to the secret ending. And uh, Sorry about that. And actually getting the umbilical cords. So, um, again... Uh, since this episode is going a bit on the shorter side, I will show you guys where the suspicious beggar usually is. So you're going to want to go to Forbidden Woods. And, uh, like I said, I definitely don't recommend bringing this uh, NPC to the chapel if you intend on keeping your NPCs alive and seeing what happens with their quest lines. Um, but from Forbidden Woods, you want to enter the shortcut, and you're going to want to call the elevator. So yeah, again, this NPC, really, the only thing you get out of it is a rune that, in my opinion, is not great. Whereas in Ariana, she'll actually give you a piece of the umbilical cord, which you need to, uh, you know, get one of the endings. So in my opinion, Ariana is just slightly more important in the order of uh, what I needed to show you guys. But again, it is a walkthrough, so I should be showing you guys pretty much everything. So if this room looks familiar, again, that's the bridge to get to the shortcut. Um, you're going to want to go into this room, go up the stairs, and go through this doorway over here. There's going to be an enemy down here, just be careful. And there's actually a few more items that we can uh, pick up on top here. It's not just the uh, the NPC. There's a few things that we could pick up. I forgot we were way like way over leveled, and I was like not intimidated, but yeah, I guess kind of intimidated by that enemy. Forgot that we could probably just kill him in two swings. And up this another uh, giant ass ladder, <laughs> you're gonna want to walk across these gears or whatever. Pick up some poison knives and then in through this doorway. Um, at this point in the game, the NPC is gone, so he would be right over here. Again, the NPC would be right here, literally eating a corpse. If that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. <laughs> um, but, uh, again, I don't recommend you bringing that NPC over, at least not on your first playthrough. Uh, on your first playthrough, what I definitely recommend you do is get at least three umbilical pieces, or three pieces of the umbilical cord, so you can use those and get the, I guess, the more difficult ending out of the way first. Um, so like I said, if you want to interact with this NPC, bring him to the chapel on your second playthrough or your new game plus playthrough, by all means, again, the only thing you're going to get out of that NPC is going to be a rune that, uh, basically just boosts your transformation into beasthood, which in my opinion is very niche and not that, just not that good. Um, so once you've, and yeah, that's it. So we're going to Hunter Mark out, uh, go back to the Hunter's Dream. And uh, like I said, I think I'm just going to check my notes here, but I'm pretty sure that's it for today. Um, so in the next episode, again, we are going to tackle the um, Nightmare Frontier. Um, again, Nightmare Frontier is a completely optional area. You don't need to do the Nightmare Frontier, um, but I do recommend you do it because it's just more of Bloodborne. And uh, there's a kind of a fun boss at the end of it uh not you know the most exciting boss in the whole game but uh there is a boss at the end of nightmare frontier so that's it for today's episode uh hopefully you guys enjoyed and uh hopefully i see you guys on the next one peace guys